Scott Atwood again. We're going to deal with the uh, Ask the Doctors, and we're continuing uh, with the gift of tongues. And in Acts uh, chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, and Acts chapter 19 are the only places in the book of Acts <clears throat> that. Uh, the gift of tongues was uh, manifested. Uh, and we're going to deal with the last two uh, in the book of Acts today. And we're going to start with the uh, where the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Before this, before Acts chapter 10, almost everyone, uh, uh, there were some exceptions, but almost everyone that was saved was Jews. And, of course, this is right after when uh, God showed Peter that he could eat any of the animals that he wanted. and that, In other words, he was telling them to go to the Gentile. So we're in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. And the infallible word says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that the that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. I'm with uh, Dr. Holman. Now, I want to point out one thing, um, that in Acts chapter 2, they repented and were baptized and then received the gift of the tongues. Here they uh, the Holy Ghost fell on them before they were baptized, so it's different. There's a Acts is a uh, transitional book. You got to keep that in mind. All right. Acts chapter uh, let's see, ten forty four. It says faith. The coming of the Holy Ghost and believers' baptism are again all components of conversion, although again in a different order. When the Gentile converts spoke in other tongues and declared the greatness of God, just as the Jewish believers had done at Pentecost 2, 4 through 11, the Jewish believers who were with Peter were astonished. Again, see prompt baptism in response to new faith all right and uh the only other place in the book of acts that uh we find the gift of tongues is in uh acts chapter 19 where uh john the baptist disciples had already been baptized now already got saved but they didn't receive the holy ghost until paul laid his hands on them. Now, this is different again. Acts, again, is a transitional book. All right, I'll stop giving my opinion. All right. Acts chapter 19 and uh, verse 6. This is what's happening. Uh, he said, do you, uh, uh, John baptized with the baptism of repentance and have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we hadn't so much as heard. And then in verse 6, he said, the Bible says, And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men that were about were twelve. All right. Acts, and this is the only uh, Bible of all of these that deal with this. So he's the only one that says anything about these verses. 19, 5, and 6. The order of conversion here follows the typical pattern in Acts except for the laying on of hands and for the mention of other tongues and the ability to prophesy an immediate result of the Spirit's coming. <clears throat> 
Okay, that's Dr. Holman. And now we're going to deal with Acts chapter 10 again in verse 44 with uh, Dr. Ruckman. He really doesn't deal with 44. He deals with uh, 47. And it says nothing about tongues, so I'm not going to bother with it. So, Dr. Ruckman doesn't say anything about Acts chapter 19 either, uh, about the tongues. So, moving along, Acts chapter 10 and verse uh, 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. All right. Uh, let's see. 1044. Up to this point, the gospel had been offered pri uh, principally to the Jews, though some Gentile proselytes may have been included in the conversions on the day of Pentecost. And Philip had previously preached preached in Samaria in Acts chapter 8. Through Peter's experience with Cornelius, it is made plain that the norm for this age for both Jews and Gentiles is the Holy Spirit to be given without delay. Human meditation or conditions other than simple faith in Christ for both the Jew and the Gentile. Really doesn't be. We're going to go into uh, 1 Corinthians. Don't worry. <laughs> I just want to kind of. Dot all my. I's. And cross all my T's. And I'm showing you the. Three different uh, times it happened in the book of Acts. And then we'll go into. 1 Corinthians. Alright. Acts chapter. Uh. 10 again, and this is uh, Dr. Henry Morris. And he says, Magnify God. The new Gentile believers were miraculously enabled by the Holy Spirit to magnify God in languages other than their own, just as had occurred with the Jewish believers on the day of Pentecost, unlike the case at Samaria. There were probably people in the Gentile crowd who knew various languages, especially Latin, Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. Cornelius had invited his friends and relatives, so the sudden manifestation would be recognized by all as supernatural and as a duplicate of that which occurred in Jerusalem. This was clear confirmation of the truth revealed to Peter in his dream, namely that there was no longer to be any distinction in the church between Jews and Gentiles. The same special outpouring had been given at the spiritual baptism of both local churches, and therefore the same water baptism followed in both cases, another important principle may also have been illustrated here. God sent a messenger not only to lead him to the full saving knowledge of Christ, but also to lead many of his friends and relatives to the Lord as well, as well because the faith and concern of one man who responded to the limited light he had. All right, and that's what uh, Dr. Uh, Henry Morris has to say about it. What do you got to say about it? You got anything to say uh, about Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19? And what about, uh, we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, uh, where Paul's laying out the rules and everything uh, for the gift of tongues and uh in Corinthians, they were, the Corinthians were abusing the gift of tongues, and uh, Paul kind of admonishes them and lays out some rules and tells them, you know, 
the importance of the gift of tongues. So I'd like to hear what anybody has to say about this. And uh, if you got anything else, another uh, subject or another verse you want us to look at, we sure will. Lord bless you and read your Bibles. Amen.